Today's lesson is entitled Ignoring God's Clear Truth. It's found in Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 18 to 23, then it skips to 28 to 32. Paul uh, was writing a, a letter to Rome, and uh, he was wanting to go there and and preach, but something he was in Corinth, but something deterred him, so he decided he would write a letter to the Romans and uh, tell about what his uh, message was if he would been able to go there himself. We're going to start at uh, verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. Well, for the, for the wrath of God is revealed from the heaven against all ungodliness is is the, is the failure in the re religious realm and unrighteousness of men is failure in the moral your moral sphere and we hold the truth in unrighteousness paul was was talking to the people of Rome, you know, and he was using a, a, a broad brush. He was he was relating to how man has been from the beginning of time. Yeah, buddy. And that's what he was trying. It wasn't a Pacific, he wasn't talking to about a Pacific group of people, but it, it was in mankind all as a, a broad brush. So he was saying that. With the wrath of God revealed from heaven against, the, it was in the religious realm, man had failed, failed him in religious aspects, in the moral aspects, and then they held it with the, the truth of the unrighteous. They, they, they received the truth concerning the wrath of God, but hindered it and prevented it from completing its work. So, we're talking about the wrath of God. Why would God sin wrath? Because of sin. God, God can't look upon it. He despises it. It's sin. And when we sin or how we sin, there's, a, there's consequences to, for every sin. There's a, there's, a, there's a payday for us. Whether we have little or much. Whether we do good or do bad, if we sin, there is consequences for every decision and act that we make. Now, we can talk, and at the same time, our God is a loving God and can forgive every sin and loves us unconditionally, but there's a price. He showed it. He, he showed it unto them, and 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 they received it not. So they they, they were they hindered it. It says, "For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse." Paul is telling that. God is the most powerful thing that man can ever wrap his mind around. That from the very beginning, from, from the essence of creation, we should be in awe. You're right, Doug. That everything that we look at, everything that we touch, yeah. smell, is from Him. It's from the Things that we cannot see, from the atoms to the cells that makes up our body, 
everything has been created through him. You've had Einstein that says no matter, you know, they've tried to, tried to diss uh, the creation. But even Einstein said there had to be something that started all of this. There has to be something. Yeah. We have such intelligent people today that they try to figure out and a lot of times they have mysteries that they can't figure out and they find it in the Bible. Uh, my wife's Facebook, you know, you'll see some of the stuff on there and one day I, I came across this is uh, the Bible, NASA proves the Bible right. And I'm thinking, well, you know, NASA proves the Bible's right. Well, the Bible, NASA confirmed that the Bible was right. You know, they, they, they always, from the beginning of time, they tried to prove that it's not. But NASA, as smart as they are, they was, they was wanting to figure out and document the planets, the sun, the solar system. Some people might have read it. They wanted to map everything out and calculate where it is and, and where it's moving. So they started having a computer program. They started feeding all the information that they man has ever had. And this program would run all the numbers, all the figures, and all of a sudden it came up red. It shut down. There was, there, there was wow. something wrong. And they said, they're missing a day. Well, you know, they said, what do you mean? We're missing a day. So they started thinking, how can we miss a day? And uh, because what they were trying to study, like when they put these satellites in orbit, they were doing a study for a hundred to a thousand years from now. So that whatever they put out there, that it would still be good a thousand years from now. That if if they did it wrong, and this clock and the way the orbits form could be catastrophic. They could lose a lot of money. So they found out that they were they were missing a whole 24 hours. And and so here's man, as smart as he is, they know. From what man can understand, they knew every position of these planets in our solar system all this time. So they was trying to predict the future, so they started, they, at the same time, if you can look at the documentation, the only thing they have to do is run it backwards. But they said, you know, it was their job to figure this out. And the buddy, they were really trying to wrap their mind around this. Well, there was a Christian on the side. He says, well, he said, in my youth, he said, I remember in vacation Bible school, in Sunday school, he said that there was a man. He said there was a story that God stopped the earth, uh, stopped the sun. And they, they said, well, what do you mean? You know, and they started wanting to elaborate on, uh, on his story. So he started beginning to tell the story, and uh, he looked, well, I'll, I'll just read it. Because there's two. Let me find out where I'm at. Okay. The first one was Joshua, and Joshua was in the battle. And he was somewhat surrounded, and it was getting dark. And he knew that if the sun would set and been surrounded, that they could overtake him. He asked the Lord, not that the sun set. I need, he needed daylight. God gave him that, answered his prayer. <coughs> He sat there and and God gave him victory. They had the sunlight. They were able to see the opposition ahead of them. And so they run that computer backwards. 
sure enough, that computer found the time when that sun stopped. Mm -hmm. The computer said it was 23 hours and 20 minutes. And they said, well, that's not a day. I mean, they're, they're worried about their 24 hours. And they looked and said, well, go back to the Bible again. Because the Christian had him a Bible. So they got back in the Bible and they started reading. And as they went down, they said, here it is. The Bible says about a day. And I was talking to Dad and I said, such small words that we don't have comprehensive of why God put that in, that, in this Bible. Bless you, Toby. Any man could just simply wrote, if a man was writing this story on his own, he, who, I would have rounded it up to a day. Mm -hmm. Just for simple reasons. But God anointed every, every little small word in this Bible Detail. is anointed. Amen. He knew that there would be scientists looking at this Somebody same check. story <laughs> that needed oh, about. Yeah. They needed that little word about to confirm themselves what the computer was telling them. And it hit 23, 23 hours, 20 minutes. And they said, well... That's about a day. It's about a day. <laughs> they said, all right, well, we've got 40 minutes uncountable for them. That same creature said, well, buddy, there's another story. Come on, buddy. Praise God. He said, the prophet Isaiah, a man, he said a man needed, uh, uh, God extended his life. He wanted confirmation. He said he wanted proof. And I don't know exactly what, I, I imagine it in my head a sundial. And when the sun would come up and rise, you know, it, it, it forms the shadow to tell you what time. He said, this is a shadow thing. He said, instead of forward, he said, I want that shadow to go backwards. Mm -hmm. He said, I want it to go back. And God said, I'll, I'll, I'll told Isaiah that he would shove that, that shadow 10 degrees backwards. Well, and he did. They, they looked it up in the Bible and they found it. And they said, 10 degrees. <laughs> 10 degrees is exactly 40 minutes. Praise God. And here he is. They said, well, there's our 24 hours that this computer said that we were missing. <coughs> but you don't hear it. This happened in 2008. Did we, did we hear it on the, in the news? No. Did you read it in the paper? No, because it confirms our God. That the stories that we read, somebody probably needs to hear is, that no matter, we, we read these as, as a lot of times as fairy tales. Like, yeah, that, that's good. That happened. God's good. And that, well, he done that then, but he don't do that now. He's the same God as yesterday as he is today. And he's still showing people and proving people that the stories that, that was in this, it's in this Bible now is still relevant today. And that's how good of a God we serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Tony. He's all knowing, all powerful. The same God that let that let rain come down is the same God that's going to deliver the people that ask for help. That Amen. that look upon him. Yeah. It says, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made less to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creepy things. Well, here we have... Uh, 
to the point that they start ignoring God, just like we do. If we, if we look at this lesson and apply it to our lives today, we, we're doing the same thing as a populace as what Paul was trying to tell the Romans that man has done from the beginning of time up to until then. And we're still following that path. It says, we know God. The United States knows God. Come on, Toby. You're right. But they don't have God in their heart. Amen. We'll see politician, uh, politicians, you know, said, I, I believe, but are they saved? Yeah. They'll tell you anything to get a vote. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, every, every politician you talk to is a Christian, if they're talking to you, if they know you're a Christian. Yeah. Oh, I believe. I but their heart is far from it. And that's what we have today. This is professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. And that's how we are today. The more we try to act like we know God, the far from Him we don't. And change the glory of uncor uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. If, if God's not our God, then something else is taking the place of, our, of God. Something. He wants to be all. He wants to be the forefront of our mind, not the back. He wants, he wants to be number one. He wants us to serve Him. Here they have, they were serving, you know, graven images, birds or four-footed beasts. They were, they were substituting God for something that was corruptible. Something, something that, that, like Dad said, that you could see, you could touch, you could kneel before. But our God is much more bigger than that. Our God covers the universe. He hears our prayers. He knows our wants and our needs. He knows what we, how to direct us. If you follow. If you submit yourself to him and lead, let him lead and guide you to where he wants you to be, he saves you a lot of trouble in the long run. Things you might go without today, tomorrow you <coughs> might be glad you never had. You know, some people might have wanted to camp up Summersville. Probably pray, Lord, let me have that camping. That fishing camp in Summersville. Now they know. Might be a real burden to them now. But we have to keep God in His place. That's right. And that's big. But small enough to fill all of this. My Lord. That's how. He's complicated, but He's so simple. We make him complicated. He's all loving, all giving. It says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their, in knowledge. their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate, reprobate mind uh -oh. to do those things which are not convenient. Not convenient. Yes. Yes. Reprobate is trouble. Is a depraved thinking, a mind that finds absolutely no approval from God. He relishes in them from the restraint. No condemnation. Some of us might know somebody that has a reprobate mind. It's a person that does not take God in consideration for anything. And they have the attitude Wild and free and come with me. You know, in that sense. It's in the moment. Have a good time. No consequences. We all 
know somebody in that sense, but it's the sense of telling God that I don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do, seeing ever I, I want to, and that I don't care about the consequences. You're right, too. And that's scary when God gives you that mindset. That's right. Because you're not looking onto Him. You're not feeling that Holy Spirit drawing you nigh. I don't even think they have a conscience. Well, if, if, if God does turn you over to the reprobate can you come back from that? Yes. Will, will he? It's 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 a very dangerous ground. What happens is people plays around with God. Come on, preacher. The word of God said that God's spirit would not always strive with man. Right. Mm -hmm. And after a while. When God turns people over to reprobate mind, I've experienced people like that. They have they have no uh, concept of good and evil. They have no concept of good and evil. They don't. They do, they're just like <coughs> none. They, they have. have <coughs> they're not condemned. They're not condemned. I mean, and we all know. You know, when when we don't obey God, we feel that condemnation. Oh yeah. A reprobate minded person does not feel that. Uh, condemnation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, is it an atheist? You can't, yeah. you can't be saved unless you get the call. And it's like, you know. In a reprobate mind, I'm not going to say you don't call, but you won't feel the call as I felt it and as you feel it. It would be more than just uh, saying, well, I'm going to get saved because that would have your conscience seared with the hot arm. But I had to know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. It's like a reprobate mind, they have no inclination to go to God. Absolutely not. You work without any gloves, you're going to get a blister. Yeah. That's going to tell you, you know, you need something. But you keep keep working, let the blister, and then your hands get calloused over, you keep going, you won't get no more blisters. Your hands will be calloused. Yeah. They, they lose their feeling. If you drive a long time, you'll, all the, my my fingers are all calloused at their all, all the joints, and you know and I don't don't feel skin's thick, and it's just like a reprobate mind. You sin, you sin, and sinning becomes easy. God used to prick your heart, and He kept pricking you until the point where let you go. Don't hurt. It don't. I don't feel it no more. Tell me you know. He, you know when. Uh, this subject matter today is super serious. Uh, preachers and laymen used to need to set themselves apart from God. We need leadership from the Holy Spirit to get things in place. And one thing about this reprobate mind it's a tough, tough line of talk. But we know, way. we know it does happen. There's another way to think about that reprobate mind is we got people that are living simple lives, living in sin. We see it. We, we, we may or may not speak out against it, but they get to a point to where they not only are living that, they think it's perfectly fine. Uh -huh. They're right to live that way. Yeah. There's nothing we can do to stop them from being from living that sinful life, and to the point to where our society embraces it. Yes. We, they've embraced sin, and that's because they have a reprobate mind. They, they are not. They, they don't feel any condemnation. They think they think they're just as right as you are. Because they don't have any feeling. But that's. Uh, so it says, you know, God gave them up. Well, you know, if, if you read all of uh, this whole chapter, God mentions giving them up three times. And the first time, uh, giving is not a permissive 
He lets them do what they want to do. He withdraws his gracious help. So when, when he lets you go, he's going to let you sin. And if that's the direction you want to go, then his grace will be lifted. You're on your own. And in a way, you know, people, we, we always says when God judges us, you know, he's going he's gonna to judge them. That, that is one form of judge. Is being of him walking away. That's a that's a high price to pay. And I'll be honest with you, when God was calling me, I didn't feel the call of God for a long time, and it scared me. I was considering thinking maybe God put me in a reprobate mind. I mean, I but I still knew good and evil. I mean, I I didn't, and I had the sense. But I was afraid that I would get that far. I didn't, you know, we think we'll never do this. But you don't know how far the devil, the devil will take you further. Than, he always will take you further than you want to go. And I've always heard there's a payday someday. Oh, yeah. We think uh, as you today as teachers were so thankful for and preachers were so thankful for and just think of the blessings that they bring down from God to make us aware of how we should conduct our life. And I thank the Lord for His leadership today. Toby, you know, uh, I sit here thinking, the worst thing is when God walks away from you, like you said. You know, when I was little, and I'd do something, well, my dad would punish me. Or my mother would punish me. And he'd be over with it. So when you disappointed them, and they walked away from you, and you could see the sadness in their face, and they wouldn't hardly talk to you. Now that was punishment. So I can imagine if God just left me alone, and just said, I have nothing to do with you. That would be the worst punishment in the world right there. <coughs> and that's what he does with that reprobate mind. He just... You're on your own. Yeah. Bless you, Toby. But he's just, he's there waiting for you. Absolutely. I mean, we all go through these, we may know somebody, but like I was saying, you know, when I was a sinner, I didn't want to be in that. I was educated enough that I didn't, I didn't want to let myself get in that <coughs> position. I knew that, that I needed to be called as well. And I wasn't getting the call. And just like I knew Dad would have request songs, try to prick my heart, and, and I'm thinking, you fools. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm serious. I, I, I had evil thoughts, like you fools trying to coerce me when I, I felt like I was justified to myself that I knew right from wrong and that I knew I was battling God in my heart. I was sort of mad at God because he wouldn't call me. And then I, I watched the church play with me, trying to show me what, you know, at the same time, the devil's trying to say, see what they're trying to do. They're trying to belittle you. They're trying to coerce you into going to get saved. I mean, you've got to, when you sit back and think about how evil Satan is and how he can twist the very thoughts of God in God's house to not let you come to this altar. That's how serious it is. It's, it can get, I mean, it can get complicated. I've thought about it. I mean, that's, actually I've sat and thought about it to where I, I see how the devil can work through my own life. And I sit back there and I know the, the songs that was requested and, and how people testified trying to get me to see my need for God. And at the, they didn't know at the point that God wasn't calling me. So I'm thinking, you're just doing this for nothing. You, you, I felt like I was too educated. 
But at the same time, I was, I was, I'm, I'm sitting there begging for God to call me. So you see, to me, I was on, I was on dangerous ground. Mentally, I could see it, you know, but my heart couldn't feel it because God was trying to show and, to, and give you guys a testimony or prayer. He was trying to lead you and you was obeying God, but the devil was trying to turn it 360 and said, you know, look. But then, as a sinner, I had to, I, I looked to God and I said, God, you know, I got scared. And I, you know, even when I needed something, if I knew I was in trouble, when my kids needed, I would call mom. Because I knew God couldn't hear me. Bless you, Tony. And I knew that she would get through to God if I needed help. You all go down that path. But I wanted that help. I wanted to be able to do it. Oh, yeah. Finally, God started pricking my heart. I had to search for him. I had to ask him. And I had to wait for my call. And when I did get that call, it felt like my heart was going to come out of my chest. And I answered that call. But I'm telling you, if he's, it's a blessing. If, you're, if God is calling you today, it's a blessing. Because he can take that away. So I, I encourage you to acknowledge it. Don't be like I did and even contemplate with the devil's motives and saying how people are trying to motivate you. Well, they are. But God's trying to motivate. God's speaking through them to speak to you. Because right. He loves you. Amen. He don't want you to go through certain paths. He's trying to keep you from that. Yes. You know, Tony, uh, before my brother got saved, we talked about the Bible all the time. And, and I tell him, you know, he needs to give his heart to the Lord and things. And he'd tell me, he'd say, Bobby, he said, God ain't called me. And he said, he ain't called me. He said, he ain't dealt with me for years. And, you know, that scared me. And, but he said, I'll tell you this. He said, if God does call, he said, I will answer. Because he's wanting to be saved, but God wouldn't call me like you. And, uh, and God had to put him on his deathbed. And uh, he's witnessed here at the church it's his testimony that he was going into hell. Come on, buddy. And he asked God to forgive him. And God saved him. And he's been living for him ever since. Yeah. But uh, to get a call from God is the greatest, greatest call a man yeah. can yeah. ever get. Because that's the only way that we're going to escape out of this world into <laughs> heaven or hell but you choose you know and it's our choice and boy I'm glad he called me oh, yeah. and praise his holy name Amen. God and God and Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit and within that lies the power to seek God and the Holy Spirit is a rich, rich blessing. It should be not cut aside from God and Jesus. The Holy Spirit is there to guide us. And uh, thank the Lord, if you're with God, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you. Okay, nice. Right. The Bible says he's obligated to call us. Mm -hmm. Because he's 
He would bring us into this world and call us into oh, no. repentance. He wouldn't do that. Uh, but he didn't say how many times. No, he, he didn't. Talk. He said obligated. That's all. In verse 29 it says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, uh, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Wow. That's a lot of sin. That's a lot of statement. Doing it. And I guarantee every one of us has probably can put check marks on every one of them. Yeah. I mean, Bill, you'll... We can go through and say, "Why well, it's not me." Well, let me tell you, every one of the, you take the poll, almost every one of us could probably mark these sins off. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. But I guarantee you, God can cover with His blood. Oh yeah. Every Amen. bit of it. Yeah. Yes. That's how good He is. Yes. He puts he, he he anointed Paul to put this in in the Bible to let to write this letter to the Romans for it to be a lesson for us today. Sure. That what they experienced yesterday is what we are still experiencing today. That from the beginning of time since he created Adam himself, sin has been in this world. Amen. And God has to. Just think Thank how many God. years that is. Thank you. He's been with us. He's been faithful and yes. just. Yes. And no matter what the cause, no matter what the populace may be that turns their back on God, He's still there Amen. waiting and ready to forgive Amen. us and to make, make us uh, part of His kingdom. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. God willing.